Hey guys, Jackson Savvy here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about getting your IP settings and what you need to know. Now, as far as your IP settings, the reason this is going to be relevant is if you need to change to a static IP, if you want to change your DNS servers, you just need to get your MAC address, things like that. So let's start off with the most basic here. Uh, we're going to be going into command line. So right click on your Windows button. And if you've got PowerShell, that's fine. You can use that. If for any reason you don't want to use PowerShell and you just want to use a good old command prompt, instead of going down here and always typing it in, let's start out with changing this. So right click anywhere on your taskbar. Let's go to taskbar settings and you'll see a section that says replace command prompt. You can turn that off. Go back and right click your Windows button and now you'll have a regular command prompt. Now within this, if you're wanting to get a little bit bigger to see everything, you can right click at the top here and go to properties. And like right now I'm gonna turn the font up. It's about 28. You can change colors, all of that stuff. Okay, so now we can kind of see it a little bit better. Let's go ahead and right there at that command line, go ahead and type in IP config, C-O-N-F-I-G, just like that. Now we'll expand this out a little. Now it does look a bit huge there, so let's just go right in the middle. Now what you're gonna see off a regular IP config command is gonna be your IPv4 address, and you might see IPv6, like you see down here, if you have it enabled. If you haven't messed with your ethernet adapter, it should be there. So first off, your address. This is the address that has been given to you by your gateway, which is this device right here. So in my case, I have a Ubiquiti router that has two different ports. One goes off to a Wi-Fi router, and then one goes direct to my computer. So the gateway here is my Ubiquiti router, and it's giving me this address, which I actually have that set kind of as, as a static. The next thing will be your subnet mask. This is what determines what kind of network you're on and how many devices can be on that network. If you're at home, this will almost never, ever change. Now, you're, you're going to see a couple more uh, devices here. Like this one right here is actually for a virtual adapter. So there's my wireless adapter, and you're going to see a lot of different stuff. So let's go take it a step farther. Let's run this IP config command. Type in IP config space forward slash all. Now this is where it'll get a little bit more in depth. And we'll go back to the top of the command and take a quick look. Here's where we started the command. It's gonna give my name for my computer and I'll see my ethernet adapter. Now, whichever adapter you're using, whether you're on Wi-Fi or you're hardwired, is where you're gonna see all this info. So in my case, I'm hardwired with an Intel adapter your physical address will be your MAC address if anybody ever asks for that. So if you're in college and you have to provide a MAC address to get on the network, that's where you'll find this. Now the kicker is you will give them the address of whatever you're using as far as an adapter. If you get to hardwire into the wall, it'll be your ethernet adapter. If you're on your Wi-Fi, it's actually gonna be on your wireless LAN and you'll give them that MAC address, the physical address. So whenever somebody asks for your MAC address, especially to connect to a network, you're giving them whichever adapter you're using, whether hardwired, ethernet, or wireless over your Wi-Fi. Now you're gonna see a whole lot of other ones depending on what you've got installed on your computer. You notice this other ethernet adapter is for a virtual box, for a virtual machine that I run occasionally. Got my Wi-Fi, and then you're gonna have some other ones here too. They're like a, the Microsoft Wi-Fi Direct and tunneling adapter. 
The ones you need to concern yourself with are your primary Ethernet adapter and your primary Wi-Fi adapter and knowing the MAC address. Now, something else we want to look at here, especially if you're a gamer or just wanting everything to run well, under DNS servers is where you can change or where you'll see what your current DNS servers are. Most people don't change these, so it's actually getting this info from the gateway adapter. And remember, the gateway is whatever device your computer is connecting to to talk to your modem or get out to the internet. So once again, on mine, I've got a Ubiquiti router. So that is actually my gateway. And I have set my DNS servers within that to be Google, which is 8888, Google's primary, and Cloudflare 1111. That's Cloudflare's primary. Your DNS, we don't want to get too deep into all this stuff, but your DNS is what's going to provide you translation for when you type in google.com. It's going to translate that to a web address that the computer recognizes. So if these aren't Google, Cloudflare, something like that, if you ever have a trouble with going to a website, sometimes your DNS server can be down from your ISP. So it's always good to kind of keep these as bigger ones like Google and Cloudflare. Okay, so now you've kind of seen, and everything you're seeing online is actually IPv4, which are addresses like this. AT&T and some other large providers provide IPv6, and all it is is a different naming scheme. It provides for more addresses across the internet because we're actually running out of these IPv4 ones. So if you see something formatted like this with all the colons, that'll be IPv6. Same thing, basically. It does same functionality. It just looks a little bit differently. Now, what you need to know is these settings are also coming from how you're connected. So, in my case, I'm going to go look at my adapter. You'll see right here that it says network. That's for a hardwired connection. You might have your Wi-Fi. But let's right-click this and open network and internet settings. Now, I don't like Windows 10 new little thing here, so let's go to Change Adapter Options, and we'll see it in Control Panel. And what I'm wanting to do here is whatever adapter I'm actually using to get on the internet, in my case, my Ethernet port, let's right-click this and hit Properties. Now, this part can be a little different depending if you're using IPv4 or IPv6. And once again, you're going to know, look at your command prompt and whichever adapter you're using, whether it be an Ethernet adapter or your Wi-Fi adapter, you want to look where the address is. It'll say IPv4 or IPv6. So, and it might say both. In my case, I've disabled IPv6 because my ISP does not support it. So there's no reason for it. So if I want to actually change my settings within my adapter, we'll go to the IPv4. It'll say Internet Protocol version. And let's hit Properties. Now this is where we'll actually see how the adapter is connecting. Most of the time you'll have it clicked for Obtain an IP address automatically and Obtain DNS server automatically. And what that is, it's what you hear the words or the phrase DHCP. It's where this right here, your gateway, automatically gives all that information to you. So in that gateway, it'll have the DNS settings stored. It'll provide its gateway and it'll hand you out an address. Now, you can either have it as dynamic with these, where it'll do it automatically, or you can have a static IP. Now, your ISP might make you have a static IP, but that would be done in your gateway. It does get a bit confusing, but in this case, I've got a static set for my PC. That way I can do more remote stuff. Um, I always know which address it's on. Uh, there's a lot of reasons you might want to set a static, even if you're doing port forwarding or anything like that. But for the most part... It's totally fine to have this on Obtain Automatically and Obtain Automatically. 
If you do have servers that are different than Google's or Cloudflare's, I would recommend go ahead and just change this part. You can leave that one automatic, but change this down to Google and Cloudflare and you'll usually have a little bit better luck. But guys, as far as like entry level stuff on IP settings, that's where you look. That's how you find your MAC addresses, your current address, your gateway. And all of this information becomes relevant the more and more you're on a PC. If you're wanting to make sure your gateway set right, if you're needing to get into your router or your modem, this will usually be the address that you're going to use. So start familiarizing yourself with just getting in here and at least seeing what adapter you're using, what your address is, what the gateway is, and learning how to go into your properties of that adapter and change settings when needed. That'll be your first step to uh, troubleshooting, setting better DNS, and knowing what you're looking for when you're working with a network technician. But well, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Any questions or any video recommendations, go ahead and put them in the comments below. Have a good day.